Well, hello, good neighbor, and welcome to this Wednesday's edition of A Moment of Faith. It's an honor to come to your place of listening today from the studio at the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle located right here in Jonesboro, Georgia. And wherever this broadcast finds you, boy, thank you so much for tuning in to A Moment of Faith, where three times a week we're able to gather around God's Word and see what it is exactly that God is able to do and God is capable of doing in a moment of of faith. You know, we have a lot of great speakers that come through this uh, broadcast uh, three times a week. We have Brother Shane, and Brother Tom, Brother Joseph, Brother Chris, Brother Joe, of course, and many others that God uses in this broadcast and in this moment of faith that's really a blessing to all of our hearts. And maybe you're wondering, well, maybe I, I want to go back and listen to some of these. I, I remember Brother Chris last Monday did a, such a phenomenal job with his message that I want to hear it again. I want to see it again. Well, guess what? You can. You can go to YouTube or you can go to Facebook and our Facebook page or our YouTube page and you can go and you can look up playlist on YouTube and you can go to the moment of faith and you can go back and it'll have his name, the date and the title of his message. Brother Steve here in our staff does a wonderful job faithfully just going and putting those in and plugging those in for us on the internet, on YouTube and the Facebook and I'm thankful for him. And so maybe you want to avail yourself to that. You can go back and watch these. They are recorded. They are archived and you can watch them anytime you want to and you can get a blessing out, out of them all over again. And I know you want to avail yourself to that. And so just a little plug in for you there. But for our Harvest family, we're almost there, almost Sunday, and it is going to be August the 8th, 8-8. Eight, eight. And in your Bible, the number 8 is the number for New Beginnings. And so we are calling this Sunday New Beginning Sunday. I, I can't hardly wait. It's just going to be such an amazing day. Uh, 10 o'clock, boy, Sunday school starting back. How many of you have missed Sunday school? I know I have. And Sunday school starting back. You know, God has blessed our church with so many great Sunday school teachers. For, from the youngest all the way to the uh, oldest and the silverest of saints. I mean, God has really blessed our church. I'm so thankful for all the Sunday school teachers that have made an impact in my life. And so maybe uh, you're in the area or you even come to church, but you have yet to come to a Sunday school class. Well, this Sunday is your day. And you can come and find out what your age group is, find out what class suits you best in your current situation. And we've got classes for ladies, we've got classes for colleges, we've got classes for, for men, we've got classes for teenagers and kids. And maybe you you might just want to come to the kids' class. I don't know. They might, they might be more exciting than the adult ones. Maybe, maybe not. But anyway, you might want to avail yourself to those, and it's going to be an exciting day. And we're going to come in at 11 o'clock. That choir is going to come out on that platform and sing that grand opener. It's just going to be an electrifying day. I can't hardly wait for New Beginning Sunday. We're going to do it in the morning at 10 a.m. for Sunday school and 11 a.m. And then guess what? We'll get to do it all over again on Sunday night at 6 o'clock. So be faithful. Be in your place for this Sunday, a big day called New Beginning Sunday. And we're looking forward to it. Be sure you're in, you'll, be, you'll be praying for it as well. Well, we're back in Mark chapter number 5, and I enjoyed Monday looking at Jarius, how he said, I can tell Jesus. And aren't you glad that you and I we have somebody we can tell about all of our troubles, about all of our problems, about all of our needs, all of our cares. Boy, last Wednesday night, I was in the college college group class there, and Brother Chris was teaching from 1 Peter 5, verse number 7, where he, uh, Peter said, casting all of our care upon him, for he careth for you. And i tell you what, that message so blessed my heart, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I'm still thinking about it a week later today, casting all of our care upon him, for he careth for you. I'm glad we can cast it. I'm glad we can tell it. Jesus never gets burdened about it. Jesus never gets tired of it. Jesus never has to say, come back later. Let me, let me ponder on this for a while. No, Jesus is always there. He's always ready. He's always accepting. He's always welcoming, saying, come on, child. He, he delights in hearing our prayer. He delights in hearing our plea. He, de he delights in his children crying out, saying, Lord, I need you. Lord, help us. I'm glad that that is so true today. Well, Jarius said, I can tell Jesus. Today, I want us to pick up the reading, continuing in the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. But verse number 26, let's look at verse 26. I like this. Oh, well, verse 25, rather. Let's look at it here together. Verse 25, and a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had. Oh, that sounds pretty bad, don't it? That sounds pretty hopeless, doesn't it? She'd spent all that she had, 
and she was nothing better. All that work, all that spending, all that heartache, just trying to get better, but she was nothing better. You know what? That's what the world will do to you. That's, what, that's the best that the world can offer. You'll spend all your money, you'll spend all your time, you'll spend all your energy trying to get better, and the world will leave you more empty than when you came. Mm. But she was nothing better, but rather she grew worse. Verse 27, when she had heard of Jesus, oh, how many of you are glad for the day you heard of Jesus? Amen. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and, watch this word, touched his garment. You may want to underline that word, touched. Touched his garment. For she said, in her heart, she said, if I may, well, here it is again, touch. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. Here's a woman who had a need. Here's a woman who had an issue. And a lot of God's people today, they, try, they may try to hide it, and they may try to just blow it off, but really, we deal with a lot of issues. A lot of things some folks don't even know about. They're inward. They're inside of us. that We don't want to share them. They, they never escape our lips. They never escape our mouth. But it's there. And you can't escape from it. You can't hide from it. But what we can do with our issues, what we can do with our problems, like Jairus, we can tell Jesus. But I'm glad like the example of this woman who for 12 years had been so sick and for 12 years had been so distraught, for 12 years had spent everything that she had, she pressed on. And she pressed through. Boy, she wanted to get to Jesus. She knew that if she could just get to Jesus, everything would be all right. And boy, she got there. She got to Jesus. But there's a big crowd there. I mean, a whole bunch of people there. And she couldn't get through. And But she, that didn't stop her. Oh, no, it didn't stop her. She pressed on and she pressed through. She pressed on and she pressed through. She got through that crowd. She got through that first layer. She got through that first phase. She got through that first tier. And she went and she kept going and going and going until she could see the hem of the garment of Jesus. And she said within her heart, all I've got to do is just touch it. All I've got to do is reach out. All I've got to do is make contact and everything will be all right. And that's exactly what she did. She reached out and she touched Jesus. I'm glad not only I can tell Jesus, and that's a blessing, but I can touch Jesus. He's passing by. He's passing through. Boy, some of those sweet moments spending time in my Bible, spending time in prayer, it's almost as if heaven is passing by and heaven is passing through and Jesus himself is walking among the midst of the candlesticks. And boy, it's as if sometimes I could just reach up and he's right there and it's almost so real and so tangible. I could reach up and touch him. And isn't that a sweet moment? Isn't that a sweet feeling? I mean, almost overwhelming. You're like, wow. You reach up and touch Jesus, and suddenly the fear is gone. Suddenly the shame is gone. Suddenly the sorrow is gone. Suddenly everything that bore you down before and prior to that moment erases and flees and runs away and is suddenly overcome by the light and runs into the shadows. Why? Because you had enough faith birth within your heart that if I could just reach up and touch Jesus, everything's going to be all right. What this woman had done, she lost it all. Literally, she lost it all. Everything that we lean upon, everything that we stand upon, health, good health, she lost it. It's gone. For 12 years, she didn't have good health. Oh, money. She'd spent all. She'd spent all that she had, all of her money, all of her life saving, all of her allowance, all of her retirement and 401k. She lost it all because she was trying to get better. And then her trust. She lost her trust in the physicians. She lost her trust in the doctors. She lost her trust in those who on this earth would try to make her feel better. Nobody could help her. Nobody could aid her. Nobody could reach down and do for her what Jesus did. Oh my, she lost a lot. But she got it all back when she met Jesus. And when she touched Jesus, she got her health back. She got her future back. She got her joy back. She got her song back. She got her hope back. She got her testimony back. I mean, everything she lost, she got back the very moment she reached out and touched the Lord. I encourage you, God's people today, he's passing by. And we might ought just to say, Lord, do not pass me by. Let me reach out. Let me touch you. 
Let me touch you. I need a little bit of power. I need a little bit of strength. I, I need a little bit of aid. I need a little bit of pick me up, if you would, to, to get me through this day. It's Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. You you men and ladies have been working so hard at your job and, and coming home and then uh, cooking for the family and, and just so many things going on and so many running to and fro and so much things. You, you've got to get done. Hey, pause a moment. Take one moment. Press through the crowd. Press, press through the uh, uh, distractions and press through those things that are holding you back and say, Jesus, with everything that is in me, I trust you and I touch you. I'm glad I can touch Jesus. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for the blessed opportunity to share your word today. I pray you bless your people. Give them a great Wednesday. Lord, we're looking forward so much to church tonight. Give us a great time in your house and with God's people. And Lord, for that one that's watching, they just need to touch you. Just to reach out and touch you. I pray that you pass by and allow them to touch you for a few moments today. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you for all that you've done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, have a good Wednesday. We'll see you again on Friday on A Moment of Faith.